And if you go to Bangor Abbey, there's two great stones. One is celebrated, one that belongs to Archibald Wilson, a stone missing from Cum Lake, who was captured after the Battle of Ballon Hedge. And there is actually, um, on the wall of the abbey, there's a notice board under glass that says this is one of the celebrated great stones. You can go to it and you can read all about it. And, but it says he's hanged at Bangor Pier, which is wrong, he's hanged at Cum Lake. But it says, it takes care of describe how he went to the scaffold on his knees, pleading his innocence, seeking forgiveness and singing psalms. And, and that's kind of how they like to remember the, the rebels here. 30 feet away is a, is a table group, so to a guy called the Dunlap family. Now, Dunlap was actually the name of a Presbyterian printer in America, yes. from Straban, who actually printed the, the Declaration of Independence. And it is really where there was any relationship. It's not unusual when the English scholarship name, but it's no binder name. And his, he was hanged from Bangor Pier with two others, McKnight and Robinson. I uh, think Robinson is, is, is very deliberate, uh, but, um, but Dunlap is, is there in the ground in Bangor Abbey. It says that he was actually buried on the 26th of July, 1798, and it's actually before his inscription is in 1805. I don't know whether the family were trying to maybe bury that, uh, or, or muddy the water, you know, and maybe they were a bit embarrassed by it. But, no, but nothing's really known about James Dunlap, so he's a wee bit of a credit license. The song is sung in the first person by a member of the Monaghan Militia, and as uh, some says, the Monaghan Militia were exclusively Catholic, brought to Bang, or brought to the Battle of Balmahinge with the Orge Yeomanry and the York Fencibles, and, and fought against people who were actually fighting amongst other things like Catholic emancipation. So you've got the irony of a guy bringing somebody along to, to Bangor Pier to hang him when the fellow actually was fighting for Catholic emancipation. So anyway, and it's written in a sort of 18th century style, so it has classical references, sorry. <coughs> and it goes like this. Mm. Summer soldiers. Ah, the summer flowers dance, and the meadows full blooming. When the bird song was still, by the thunder of war. But those young hearts had down their spirits were lifted. As tyranny nigh, they would soon overthrow. For all men are equal, no matter their station, be it prince, pope, or pauper, when liberty's bound. So the song I will sing you, I pray you will listen, and will learn from the story of James Dunlop of Down. In sweet Monaghan, I spent a dear childhood, and I joined the militia to keep me in bread. The shilling was useful, a roof I provided, I kept both my wife and my children in bed. But that year 98, such calamitous commotion, Straight away we were marched to the county of Down and lined information with cannon we waited for Monroe and his levels at Balmage Town. I well I remember that terrible slaughter. Their pikes were no match for the musket and ball, like waves upon shingle. They died in their hundreds, but still came upon us, though high they did fall. There was one in the fray, amidst the great carnage, like young Hector he fought at those high walls of Troy. With a sword and a pistol, he rallied them onwards, this giant of a hero, though only a boy. His name was James Dunlop. And he fought till the evening, boy against man, never given a yard. But soon was surrounded, and with many arrested, and taken to trial to the new town of ours. He was given short shrift by the judge who presided, dismissing those pleas from his mother so dear. In chains he was taken, his father's heart broken. Along the high road to Bangor, to hang from the pier. Aye, the granite sky left that morning in summer, 
as the waves gently lap against the rocks in the bay. I offered a prayer as I placed the new shrine to him, but he smiled, shook my hand, and these words he did say. I fought for you, brother, please know I forgive you. And with that, he stared out straight to the sea. I heard the rope tighten, his parents were weeping, and I knew I killed one so much better than me. Your finest friend may have once been a stranger, or an enemy met neath the cannon's wild roar. So reflect on the tale of James Dunlop of Anger, and we'll learn from mistakes made in Erwin's green shore. But the lesson's too late for this pitiful soldier, as he breathes, as he wanders the whole world around. But the prayers and hot tears could turn back the clock hands. I'd march shoulder to shoulder with that young heart of thine. And so to conclude, will I pray in the future that Hibernia's sons ever reach out a hand to your friend, to your foe, and always the stranger, and let all men be welcomed to this gentle land. And we'll live in a country where good men may prosper in freedom, in friendship, in liberty bound. As for me, in the end, when I make in my maker, I know I will embrace James Dunlop of Dying. And if you go to Bangor Abbey, there's two great stones. One is celebrated, one that belongs to Archibald Wilson, a stone missing from Com Lake, who was captured after the Battle of Ballinage. And there is actually, um, on the wall of the Abbey, there's a notice board under glass that says this is one of the celebrated the great stones. You can go to it and you can read all about it. And, but it says he's hanged at Bangor Pier, which is where he's hanged at Con Lake. But it says it, it takes care of 